Well, hello, good evening. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news up at Desawe Kanda, also live on TV Ghana on Facebook. I am Alfred Akonsek. Coming up tonight. Organized Labour warms up for its planned February 13 nationwide demonstration. Despite indications, the government will likely back down on the implementation of the VAT on electricity. Does Labour not trust government? We hear from Labour shortly here on Ghana Tonight. Also, tension in Kweo Bipong in the East the system region after police arrested over 70 youth for allegedly attacking the police and for other acts of vandalism. We hear from the regional minister how the Security Council is dealing with the situation. Also tonight, the quality of the air in the atmosphere in recent times has been a major cause of worry for many. Tonight, we speak to experts why the situation, the health implications and how we can protect ourselves. And this is a big issue here on Ghana Tonight. As always, you are an integral part of the conversation. Share your thoughts, views, comments and opinions with us. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and X. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The Kwe Municipal Security Council says basic schools will remain closed until Wednesday on security grounds. Meanwhile, the Kwe Etibie Government Hospital has confirmed a 60-year-old woman was brought in dead from gunshot wounds in the Bipon Valence. Medical Superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Med Kobna Awotre-Redu, confirmed three others who were treated with minor injuries on the scalp Skin and eye are all currently in stable condition. <music> Labour groups press on in their quest to hit the street in protest of the 15% VAT on electricity consumption. Organized labor has begun wearing red and hoisting red flags, insisting only a formal notice to the country's electricity distributors, announcing the withdrawal will stop the action. We are just showing our displeasure and our anger at the fact that government is beginning to uh, down us with taxes unprecedented in the history of this country. We are not engaging anybody. Today the letter will reach the police. This week we are in red. And then next week Tuesday, 13th, all things being equal. We'll kickstart or we'll start rolling out our plans. Still on the VAT on electricity consumption, the Ghana Agricultural Workers Union's General Secretary Edward Kariwe has criticized government for not engaging organized labor before attempts to implement the decision. He spoke on hot issues. If you look at what government gives to workers as compared to the taxes that we have it takes away every you know increment that has come to workers and it, we, are, we should not be looking at only that there are a number of taxes that all of us know a government of them up to 40 percent i mean four uh, 40 different types of ta taxes that government has imposed on us they are varied <music> Parliament is expected to resume sitting tomorrow, Tuesday, February 6, to begin one of its three meetings ahead of a dissolution of the House next year. Key bills like the anti-gay bill and anti-witchcraft bills are expected to dominate discussions in a House that will have many of its members hoping to enjoy their final days following their inability to have a shot at a possible return in this year's elections. Definitely be in touch with my good friend the president, even though I disagree with him in his refusal to assent to our bills, and I've given notice that we'll be in court on this matter.
The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament has requested a forensic audit by the Auditor General at the National Sports Authority following suspicion of dissipation of funds. Officials of the authority appeared before the committee on Monday. So total about 250,000. Did you lodge this in your central, the, the NSA's central account where all lodgements are supposed to go at head office or did it go into your original account in Kumasi? Mr. Chairman, partly was lodged in Accra and the other in Kumasi. Why do you raise revenue in Accra for an event in Accra and lodge it in, in, in a different account in Kumasi? The invoices we issue to this two um, the director general will explain why. But you are the accountant. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. He's been vice president. Mm -hmm. He has had all the opportunity working with the president to do whatever he can do for this country. And let me be very, very fair to the sitting president. The sitting president has been fair to the vice president. He's given him all the opportunity mm -hmm. to run this country. The man is tired. There's nothing new he can do. And that's, that's a fact. Now, with my friend and brother, JDM, he's been president before. We know that there's nothing new that my brother can be doing. The people of Ghana are looking for an alternative. That is exactly what it is. They are looking for an alternative. Fortunately, they have an alternative who can get the job done. Mm -hmm. With honesty, with selflessness, with competence, and with integrity, and with a big vision. So that's the difference. The people want change. You know, and, and, and you have somebody who is ready to lead that change. Well, that's Alan Kojo Chamanting. He's the leader of the movement for change. He's talking about people who are tired and people who, you know, in his view, have served already. But here on your election command center, the number of things we're going to be doing in the coming days, subjecting some of these statements to scrutiny and asking the questions that resonate with you, the Ghanaian people. But coming up next, tension in Kweo, Bipong in the Eastern region after police arrested over 70 young people for allegedly uh, attacking the police and for other acts of vandalism. We hear from the regional minister how the regional security council is dealing with the situation. So earlier today, Unfortunately, uh, we got news of what has been brewing since yesterday, over the last 24 hours in that part of the Eastern region. More than 71 young people have been arrested and others on the run after a clash between the youth and the police in Kweo Bipong. Now, the, what you're seeing on your screen now is a statement from the Ghana Police Service. Now, uh, as, with respect to what happened in the Eastern region, the statement by the police recounts events leading to the arrest and how the suspect was dealt with according to the police statement which was released earlier today 46 as at the time 46 more people in connection with the attacks on the bipong chief's palace and some police officers at kweo bipong in the eastern region had been arrested bringing the total number of suspects so far arrested to 71 that was as at the time the police issued the statement the suspects together with some other currently on the run attacked the Bipon Chiefs Palace on the 4th of February 2024 and injured seven people, including five police officers. They also vandalized police vehicles and six police motorbikes, as well as three private vehicles. The suspects also caused damage to sections of the palace and adjoining buildings. 
The police statement goes on to indicate that upon initial investigation and screening of the suspect, 40 of them have so far been identified to have played various roles in the attacks and have been linked to available evidence and have also been detained to assist investigations. Now, the police officers came under attack at the palace when they were called on 4th February 2024 to take over a murder suspect, Juan Kwesinyako, who had been arrested by some community members and sent to the Bipong Chief's Palace awaiting the arrival of the police. Some of the members of the community, including those in the police custody, who had heard about the, the arrest of the suspect, Kwesinyako, had besieged the palace in the hope of lynching the suspect. That's what the point five of this statement says. However, when the police prevented them from lynching the suspect, they rather attacked the police throwing stones at the Ghana Police Service. Now, uh, earlier, we got some background information to this as well, uh, which we're going to put in shortly, just to give you a, a clear idea of uh, what has been happening. The, initially, there was information that there is this person who has been accused of murdering and raping a 50-year-old. And as a result, there was a manhunt for him. Now, it was upon the arrest of this suspect, this murder-rape suspect, that led to this. And we want to establish why, why the Ghana Police Service is reported to have taken this suspect to the chief's palace instead of the, host, the, the police station that they were supposed to. Uh, Seth Kwame Champong is the Eastern Regional Minister. He's the chair of the Regional Security Council, the Eastern Regional Security Council. He's joining us on Zoom, uh, on the telephone, I beg your pardon, for a quick conversation on this. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Champo, for your time here on Ghana Tonight. Now, what have you received in terms of a briefing as chair of the Regional Security Council about this incident that happened earlier today? Yes, please. The Regional Police Command has um, given me an initial brief on the happenings of uh, all South municipality, particularly the common town. I see. But are you able to share the details of the briefing that you, you received from the, the Ghana Police Service? Okay, thank you very much. What it is is that apparently there's been an alleged murder and uh, uh, so corporate who everybody believes is the murderer in respect of the allegation was found. And in instead of sending the person to the mandated law enforcement agency of the Ghana Police Service, they rather sent the fellow to the palace. And that ended up becoming another matter. So the misunderstanding started from there. Unfortunately, the police came in to intervene upon realizing that the matter was getting out of hand. They called upon the police. The police came in. The Irish crowd, they were not so welcoming. And unfortunately, more damage to property occurred. The police vehicle was vandalized. The palace also had its own fair share of property damage. All put together uh, gave room for us to deploy more men, more security enforcement agents on ground. Fortunately, that aided us in restoring calm to the community. As we speak, uh, people have started going about their normal duties. Those evening traders who sell by the roadside and all that have started, and we are beginning to see signs of normalcy. So, in a nutshell, uh, this is what really occurred. Uh, however, I must uh, commend the Ghana Police Service for their prompt response in respect of these matter when the news broke to them and they were very much um, on point and I must admit a high level of professionalism exhibited. 
I see. So far, I am impressed, and I want to encourage them to continue to help us have some stability and some peace and harmony within the Beton Township. It is really uh, a worry for us if in these early days we suffer such disturbances. Uh, uh, and, and we understand that one person has been confirmed dead as a result of these clashes. Do you have that information? We are still counting on a full draft from the Ghana Police Service. We've heard of some casualties, but actual numbers have not been confirmed yet. We're waiting for the medical team to confirm, so post autopsy and all that. So we are just waiting for the police service to give us the report. The initial brief we were given. However, uh, you understand that it is still work in progress and we wouldn't want to rush in confirming numbers. However, in, 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 in essence, at the end of it all, we will give a full report to everybody. But I'm praying that we don't hear of such allegations anymore. I see. Now, but the police statement captures the arrest of this alleged rape and murder suspect. Uh, one question, that's the name they gave. But have you been briefed by the police service why they took this suspect after he was arrested to the chief's palace instead of to the police station? Have, have, have you asked them that question? It's still, it's still a wonder to all of us. We, we know that when suspects are arrested, they take them to the police. I think it was more or less a citizen's arrest. And so they took the fellow to the palace. Uh, based on some information we are gathering, we are yet to confirm all of it. Uh, some uh, amount was placed on him but as for manhunt. So whoever found him will be rewarded. So these are some of the matters we are following closely to really find out why what occurred did happen. I see. But we've been reading that um, this suspect who has been arrested is reported to have allegedly raped and murdered a 52-year-old woman. And that's the reason why, in fact, he was on the run and the bounty was put on his head. And that's the reason why uh, the young people, after getting to know that he's been arrested, wanted to lynch him. Is that information that you have, at least based on this report? Is it corroborated on the information that you have? In fact, I must be very straight here as I speak with you. Mr. Kanti, the police have not confirmed those allegations to me. So I still would want to hesitate and receive a full briefing. We are holding a monthly regional security meeting on Thursday, and all of them will be in one uh, meeting. And we will have in full a briefing from our officers who are enforcing the rules for us. And I'm sure I'll be able to speak authoritatively by then when we we'll have received a full briefing from them. Any idea of how many of these people have been arrested after this incident? Um, as we speak, they picked quite a number of suspects, getting close to 70 and plus. However, we're still monitoring. My joy is that there is peace in the community as we speak. And people are still relaxed and going about their normal duties. That is what we pray to return. That is all we are looking up to, to return. I see. Now, finally, before we, we go, what, what exactly other measures have you put in place to ensure that this does not happen, this, uh, this does not escalate, at least based on what we have seen now? Thank you very much. I always say that the best form of security is the people 
we ourselves. Fortunately, my immediate information just about the last half hour tells me that you know our local communities. We have hawkers, we have roadside sellers who will treat uh, during the night. The information reaching out to me tells me that they have returned to business and that there is absolute calm in the community. To me, this is a beautiful sign of stability and security. Once the people themselves believe that they can go about their jobs peacefully without any encumbrance, then we are seeing signs of positivity. And that gives me a firm hope and assurance that our arrangement is going as planned. Well, we'll wait for some more updates from you and uh, also what, what's happened, uh, especially to this suspect as we're talking about in the coming days. Thank you very much. Seth Kwame Champon is the Eastern Regional Minister, is a chair of the Eastern Regional Security Council, talking about this incident uh, that led to, the, from what we are hearing, the, the death of one person, a 60-year-old and, but we'll be updating you as well as we go on here on Ghana tonight. But coming up next, University Teachers Association of Ghana, that's UTAG, the University of Ghana branch, have indicated a strike. We have exclusively a copy of a vote that was taken whether or not to go on strike and the details point to something really interesting, which we'll go, be getting into shortly here on Ghana Tonight. It certainly doesn't look good. Now, news just in is that the University of Ghana branch of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, that's UTAG, they have voted to approve a strike action by members of the valid vote cast, at least based on the information we have exclusively, over 80% of approved and that's those members present voted for a strike 80 percent and less than 20 percent disapproved of this decision to go on strike some of them were absent and we're going to put that on, on the screen shortly so that you see how things played out at that said uh meeting earlier today now take a look at this this is what was captured on the uh, screen that, uh, as we have it now. now yes, that tag UG decides to strike or not to strike. Total voters, 1,250. Total votes cast, 520. We are talking about University of Ghana, UTAC. Those who voted yes, 433. That is 83.3%. And those who voted no, that's 15.8%. That's 82. Those who were absent, 5. That's about 1% of the total votes cast. Now, this was signed by Professor Innocent Lawson, Chair of the Electoral Commission of the University of Ghana, UTAC. What this clearly means, as you may see there, but there's a message in this vote that has been cast. And Professor Ransford Jampo is a professor of political science at the University of Ghana, but he's the president of the University of Ghana, UTAC. He's joining us on the telephone. Professor Jampo, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me. First off, now we're just seeing uh, the sheet of your vote cast earlier today about whether or not to go on strike. You overwhelmingly, I'm talking about your membership, overwhelmingly voted 433 of you that you should go on strike. Now, what, what does this actually mean or what led to this, yeah. this vote? Alfred, but first of all, where, where did you get this from? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've well, got sources within your... It's your... a purely internal UG matter. Where did you get it from? I, I, Why did I send it to you? <laughs> indeed, I have, I have sources within your quarter, so yeah. Uh, I can't disclose right. my source. 
<laughs> yeah, all right. But the point is that um, people, lecturers of the University of Ghana have given a clear message um, that they want to strike. Uh, the point is that somewhere last week, the National Executive Committee of um, Utah met, and then we reviewed the over one-year negotiations that we've had with government, and the concern that was expressed was that um, it appears government is being lackadaisical like and not treating us with all the seriousness that we deserve at such meetings. So you can imagine, for, uh, for over a year, we go for meetings and they send people who do not have um, the mandate to commit government to do anything to such meetings. And so I think December last year, the National Executive Committee met um, in WA, where a motion was tabled that if by the end of January, we don't see anything satisfactory as far as the processes, negotiation process are concerned, I will strike. Um, so um, January ended, and then a meeting was called. And among the National Executive Committee members, the decision was unanimous that uh, we go on strike. But to be able to go on strike, it will require that the 15-member campuses of the public universities must all vote so that we can put the numbers together. Um, the, we have today up to Friday to all vote. UG has decided to vote first. And so that's the outcome. The other 14 campuses would also have to vote. And then afterwards, then NEC would direct us um, to strike. But I must say that um, ever since we, we passed this resolution to call on our local campuses to vote, uh, we've seen um, government showing a certain seriousness. So today, for instance, um, the Minister of Education himself, the Deputy Minister for Finance, Deputy Minister for Labor, uh, met with us to begin discussing. Our challenge has been that it should not always be that uh, it should not, we shouldn't always go to strike uh, before government would want to be serious with us. Um, they showed up today just because they have heard that uh, Beauty was voting and other campuses and we're also going to vote. Nevertheless, our members have said that whether um, government side shows seriousness or not, they would take their own decision. And so we have, from now to Friday, uh, we met today, maybe it's not Wednesday, if something satisfactory come, comes up, I'm sure uh, we can go tell our local members they can change their mind. But if nothing satisfactory you know, comes, comes, comes up, then I'm telling government that Legon has voted. All other campuses are voting from today at Friday. And um, if by Friday uh, we are not satisfied, then um, we may be forced to communicate in the language that are understood by government. And I do not understand. Today when we had a meeting, I had a call to tell them that, look, if you go into agreement with Labour and for some reason you may not be able to go by the agreement, the courteous thing to do is to reach out to them and to explain why for why you may not be able to go by the agreement. Three years ago, almost three years ago, we were with government, we were on strike, we were, we were in demand, we, we, we demanded something. And the government pleaded and pleaded that what you are asking for, we cannot give, but we'll give you a token. Just hold on to this with you for just a year. Then afterwards, we will revisit the issue and pay you what you deserve. We accepted. In fact, some of us were, were we incurred the displeasure of our own members. Well, our members insisted we don't accept the token the government are giving to us. But we had to go back to plead with our own members and say that well, government has shown a certain good faith and let us give them the benefit of the doubt. They give us only one year. Now one year expired, and they couldn't even reach out to tell us that look, we promised you that after one year we would review things. Now two, one year expired, they didn't say anything. Two years expired, they didn't say we are getting into our third year. And so what do you want the people to do? If you really treat them with contempt. And so that, that is that is how they would respond. And so my point is that yes, UG has voted, but all other for the rest of the fourteen companies must also vote. And when the decision is that we all want to go and between now and Friday, nothing satisfactory happens. Then uh, like I said, we may be forced to communicate in a language that 
is better understood by Ghana. But we are not interested in going on strike because um, it disrupts our own academic calendar. It has so many negative consequences. We don't want to do it. We don't like it, but we don't hate it. And so if you are pushed the wall, then we may have to resort to that industrial action. But so what's happening is that you're saying that this exercise is taking place in all the public universities across the country between now and so Friday. It's taking place in all the 15 public universities across the country between now and Friday. It is just that you decided to vote today. Others may be voting tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Friday is the deadline for all um, to have voted. I see. And if, if it happens that all these universities vote according to the same pattern and there is no clear intervention by government, then all things being equal, we should be ready for a UTAC strike by next week? Oh, oh well, uh, NEC will NEC need to decide on the dates on which we will strike. But as for the pattern, I can predict that um, the decision was taken at the National Executive Committee at the National Executive Committee meeting, we took that decision in December, and then we recently reviewed and uh, met again, and then um, the decision was made again. And National Executive Committee is just a coming together of the various local leaders of U um, of UTAG. and so um, the decision was unanimous. So, as in terms of the partner, I can predict what is likely to happen. But like I said, um, we are not uh, irresponsible. We we don't lie. Um, to go on strike, and we hope that uh, between now and Friday, something um, um, satisfactory would come up. Now that um, and the Minister of Education himself um, has intervened, but we would, res we would respectfully ask them that, look, we are not kids. Um, if you enter into agreement with us, and for some reason we will not be able to go by that agreement, we are reasonable people, just reach out to us and let's talk. So that when our people ask us, we would also be able to have something reasonable and meaningful to tell them. You don't wait to be, uh, you don't wait and think, um, just resort to um, that reaction when you get to know that the people are about strike. And I think it's not the best tool that we are learning, that we care about that industrial peace and harmony. So that will continue. So, uh, we'll see how things play out between now and Friday. What happens next? Thank you so much for your time. Prof pleasure. Appreciate it. Professor Ransford Jampo is the president of the University of Ghana, UTAG. And we have some exclusive information for you. We put it on the screen uh, not too long ago that they have voted to go on strike. But this is subject to the National Executive Committee meeting. And uh, this is what we have exclusively. Well, we have sources within the UTAG UG. This has not been denied. It's been confirmed, as you just heard, Professor Jampo. 433 of their members who cast their vote earlier today, 433 out of 520 voted yes in favor of a strike. No, says 82 of them voted no. And those who were absent, five of them. Now, so that's how things played out earlier today. Now, from what we understand, all the other UTAG branches across the 15 public universities across the country will also have their voting sessions, whether or not to go on strike. And it's all because of their conditions of service. But bear in mind that it's not just about UTAG alone. Already we have the Teachers and Education Workers Union on strike, which is taking a bite on the universities. We have the Tertiary Education Workers Union on strike, TEWUG, was also on strike. And then we have the Senior Staff Association of the Universities, who are also on strike. So think about it. If Utah goes wide on to it, it's not going to be good for the students of the various tertiary institutions, public universities across the country. But coming up next, sanitation situation on the University of Ghana, especially the University of Ghana campus, is getting worse by the day as the teachers and educational workers union and the tertiary education workers union ghana stay away from work that will tell you how the situation looks like oh that's this health crisis that is looming on the university of ghana campus as students decry the poor state of the sanitation on campus my colleague judith brown earlier today visited the university of ghana campus and this is as a result of the 
Teachers and Education Workers Union, that's TEWU, and the Tertiary Education Workers Union, Ghana, TEWU, uh, going on strike, which has resulted in heaps of garbage on campus. Take a look. The environment has been like this for about two weeks now since they were embarked on industrial strike. Um, it is really affecting us in so many ways. Now you go to our washrooms, they are unclean and you can't even use them. And you can see the environment is very dirty. And you know, this can cause um, respiratory diseases and even viral bacterial infections. Sometimes you go to the washroom and it's not cleaned. And even sometimes, I don't know if it's because of the strike, the water is not flowing. You go to the washroom, there's urine inside the WC or feces. It's very bad, honestly. You can't even use the place. You just decide to keep your urine and then go home. Since I'm a resident, when I see sad things, I just keep my urine and then I go home and then ease myself. If care is not taken, a lot of diseases would come out of it, like typhoid, cholera, which is going to affect students of UG. The cell here, um, so, you know, bacteria or, or flies can even go and um, get to the um, refuse and then step on your foot and you are going to fall um, ill or sick. troubling to say the least with what you're seeing right now that is just a sneak peek of what's happening this is not the full picture now we understand that the refuse especially in the halls of residence has also been attended to and that's that's quite troubling to say the least and but aside from the Tewuk and the Tewuk strike the senior staff association have also been on strike for quite a while now Isaac Donko is the national chair of the Senior Staff Association of the Universities, the public universities in Ghana. He's joining us on the telephone. Mr. Donko, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello, Mr. Donko, good evening. Good evening, my brother, for having me. Great. Now, so, uh, you, you've been on strike for... Hello? Hello? Yes, you've been on strike for a little over two weeks now. Now, uh, we understand you, you met the National Labor Commission as well, and uh, they have given a directive that you should go back to work. Why is the strike continuing? Nothing. Uh, I, I want you to listen hello? to me on the telephone. Don't, don't, don't listen on the TV. Okay. Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Okay. I said the National Legal Council of the Association, Senior Staff Association, is meeting at the University of Public Human University of Science and Technology tomorrow at eleven AM to discuss the direction by National Labor Commission. So from tomorrow going uh the Republic will hear from us. I see. The directed by the National Labor Commission. We are having next meeting tomorrow. Okay, so, so after the meeting, we are going to communicate to the public. So the senior staff, you are having a National Executive Committee meeting tomorrow? Yes, we are having an emergency meeting tomorrow. And is this, is this in, in, in conjunction with the Teachers and Educational Workers Union who are also in strike, uh, uh, on the strike, I beg your pardon, as a result of your concerns as well? Yeah, this, this emergency meeting is for only senior staff association of public universities and not uh, TEU or GAWA or any other union, but okay. senior staff association. Right. Now, since you started the strike, I recall that you were asking for some eight months arrears of your tier two pension deductions. Have any of these arrears been paid? Oh. Yes, as of today, we have April, May, and June paid. So that's three months out of the eight months? 
three months has been paid so far. Any any idea when the, the, the rest of the five months will be paid? Yes, we had information from GPT Finance Minister that uh, the rent has been paid, but our our board of trustees are yet to confirm whether it has been paid or not. So our checks our checks indicate that uh, it, it hasn't appeared in the account. So we are still wait, waiting for them. When they give us the confirmation that it is in the account, then it's a good news. If it is not there, then we are sorry. We have to wait for a while. I see. Uh, but you were also asking for some 3% penalty on these areas that have, that have not been paid all the while? Yes, yeah, we are actually asking for the penalty, and the penalty is also part of our demand. And it is part of the demand, and that is the position of the uh, pension cut. I see. Now, the National Labor Commission had indicated that they were going to take you to court if you don't call off this strike. Oh, is that so? We are here to hear nothing from them, and we are patiently waiting for their court action. We are ready for that. Okay. We'll wait for tomorrow, your neck meeting and the outcome. We'll see what, what the way forward will look like. Thank you very much, Isaac Donko. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Isaac Donko is the chairman of the, uh, the Senior Staff Association of the Public Universities in Ghana. They've been on strike for uh, over two weeks now. And you've heard from, from UTAG as well, what they're lacing their boots to do if there's no uh, intervention by government. But still staying with Labour, up next, organised Labour warns of the planned February 13 de nationwide demonstration. It's going to go ahead, despite indications the government will likely back down on the implementation of the 15% VAT on electricity. Now, does Labour not really trust government? Because yeah, there's been widespread publications about the idea to botch this whole fifth VAT on electricity. But Labour is asking for official communication. We'll be back shortly after this quick break on this matter. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, Labour unions are pressing on in their quest to hit the streets in protests against the VAT on electricity consumption. Uh, there's been some reports earlier today that government has already botched that idea, but there hasn't been any official communication to that effect. So, organized Labour is insisting only a formal notice to the country's electricity distributors announcing the withdrawal of this VAT on electricity would have them change their minds on this nationwide demonstration. Here are leaders of the various labor groups. I'm talking about TUC, Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwest Association. We also have uh, many others who have been speaking to this, to our labor correspondent, Daniel Opoku. Take a look. Actually, uh, put 15% VAT on the electricity bill. It's prudent and think that you should officially communicate to organized labor. Then organized labor, you will use that communication to reconvene its um, a meeting to actually discuss and take another decision. Because we said in our first communicate that the only thing we want is a total and unconditional withdrawal of the 15% percent value. I don't think so, that we are sending fears. Uh, if there is any such uh, you know, belief or perception, then it is rather the wrong approach of government that is uh, sending fears to the investors. We are going ahead with our action. We are not engaging anybody. Today, the letter will reach the police. This week, we are in red. And then, next week, Tuesday, 13th, all things being equal, we'll kickstart or we'll start rolling out our plans. No, we are just showing our displeasure and our anger at the fact that government is beginning to uh, down us with taxes unprecedented in the history of this country. We are waiting silently by close of today to see whether um, any official communication will be released. 
and if we don't get anything by tomorrow our letter to the employer will go and we are setting out um, all the modalities to ensure that our members are released to participate fully in the national demonstrations I mean beyond Greater Accra in all the other regions well, the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Karewe, has also been talking about how this whole process of engagement for this electricity on, that's the VAT on electricity, was rolled out. They say that labor were not consulted at any point, and that's one of the concerns that he expressed in an earlier interview on hot issues. Take a look. No government imposed these taxes. There was no engagement. Labor was not, you know, engaged. Labor did not give their consent. Labor did not contribute anything to it. From nowhere, government has given directive to ECG and then uh, to, to implement. D did the government have to consult you? Why Labor? not? Are we not Ghanaians? Mm. Because on whose ticket is the government ruling? I mean, it would have been a catsy call on Labor, but did, did it, was it a must that they consulted you? You, you see, we have, we have indeed made nonsense of democracy. What is the essence of democracy when you will not consult the people? We are custodians of the democracy. Is it because we have voted them to be in power? They think that they cannot consult us. What is the meaning of democracy to the ordinary uh, Ghanaian? It's consultation, listening to them. And if we are workers group and we are leaders of workers and you think that you will not consult us just because you have got the power to do whatever you want to do, in any case, even with this imposition of the tax on the electricity consumption, they are referring to the act. This was there in 2013. Why is it that all these years they have not implemented it? Does it mean that if this tax is not imposed today, or 2024, there will not be Ghana? The economy will go extinct? So certainly, it is government choices. This is a choice of government to think that it is in 2024 that we can impose this tax. So we are saying that you must withdraw it because we cannot pay. And we will not pay. Because those who are imposing that tax have got the ability to pay. Some of them do not even pay taxes. I mean, it's ridiculous that the, the people who are, who are better placed mm. are those who are not paying taxes. Okay. Even where they are paying taxes, they are giving money to pay the taxes. And we, those who have nothing, you know, we don't have other perks. We have nothing get near ordinary workers taking 150 cities, 200, 500. Are those who are to pay the taxes? So certainly, those who are implementing or making these laws for us and making these policies and trying to implement them, look, they are better place to pay them. Edward Carroll were there, but it's something that we'll see um, how things play out, especially if there's going to be any official communication from government on these reports we're reading about, the idea to drop this VAT on electricity consumption. But you would have the full interview that you just watch on, on TV3 News on YouTube. Just go on YouTube, type TV3 News, you would get the full interview on this matter. Coming up next, the quality of air in the atmosphere in recent times has been a cause of worry for many. Tonight, we speak to experts why the situation, the health implications really should be of concern to us all going forward. But this is on the back of a report by the Environmental Protection Agency. And you, you may have noticed something amiss about the atmosphere lately, especially with visibility um, in the early hours of the morning and with the air you breathe, or we all breathe. Now, that is because the quality of air has become poor. A measure of the air in the past few days show its quality has reduced significantly and potentially poses a health hazard or a risk to all of us. Now, take a look at this. That's according to the Environmental Protection Agency. A report since Friday, February 2, they classify the air we've been breathing as unhealthy and especially most parts of the Greater Accra region. And Saturday, February 3, it has went up to very unhealthy. Sunday, February 4, hazardous. The air we're breathing was classified as hazardous by the EPA Accra Air Quality Index. Today, 
has been classified as very unhealthy. And if you look at the forecast for tomorrow, February 6th, it's also being forecast to be unhealthy. The air you, go, you and I are going to be breathing. Well, I want to hear from the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Felicity Ahiafianyo is chief weather forecaster there. And she gives us an idea of how the Hamatan has also contributed to what we're experiencing now. From our part as a meteorologist, the dust itself is the, uh, the cause of the reduction in visibilities, which is a solid uh, particles, which in a way is not healthy for humans to breathe in. Let's get a bit further on this, and then especially giving us an idea of how things are playing out uh, going forward. Uh, joining us on Zoom is Josephine Osei Tutu, is a registered respiratory therapist at the University of Ghana Medical Center. Uh, Josephine, it's good to have you. Thank you for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. First of all, talk about this air we've been breathing at, according to the EPA, hazardous, and we're seeing very unhealthy and so on. What risks are we exposed to? Stop. I'd like to take the opportunity to mention the fact that um, air quality simply means how much suitable or clean the air is for us to breathe in or survive in as human beings or for our environment to be safe, basically. So given our current state, um, taking into consideration the Hamatan, mm -hmm. some of the risk factors that we are bound to encounter would generally be um, upper respiratory tract infections that include cold and catar with symptoms like fever, sore throat, runny nose, nasal congestion, and yeah, basically that, basically that. Yeah. So on the general, we are most likely to have a lot of cold and catar with fevers and runny nose around this season but, yes. well, but how about those with pre-existing conditions like asthma and so on what measures should they be taking within such periods of us with asthma and chronic bronchitis copd like emphysema what we should do is for one to make sure that we are on top of our management plan that we're actually making sure that our treatment regimen is being um, gone through diligently okay so if you're supposed to take your medications at a certain time you take it if you're supposed to attend clinic or go for review you go ahead and do that if you know that you have certain triggers like dust pollen mold spores you make sure that you avoid them so you have to avoid places that contain such pollutants or triggers all right and then you have to make sure that you are eating lots of vegetables lots of fruits you are taking in lots of fluid and you are generally staying well hydrated because this season is a grand trigger for you to have like exacerbation of those conditions and um, the dust the pollen, the pollutants, the particulate matter, they irritate the airway so much that it can cause a lot of worsening of the, the condition that is currently existing. So you want to make sure that you avoid it. So for such populations, right, if you can avoid moving about too much, you know, going out a lot of times, engaging in a lot of activities that will cause you to be exposed to these triggers, try as much as possible to stay away from them. I see, yes, I think that basically if we do these ones, we would be okay. Well, Josephine, would you recommend the wearing of nose masks uh, within that period as one of the safety measures? Yes, I would recommend it. I would recommend it. I mean, nose mask is not something that you just wear because you want to stay away from a disease condition, basically. So it's a film of protection that helps filter your the air that you are breathing in, right? So mm -hmm. if you have the idea that there's some sort of pollution, right, that you want to prevent from getting into your airways, 
then you would want to wear a nose mask. Again, if you have a condition and you would not like to spread your bacteria or Mm. And, and and we get it right there. So you would recommend the the wearing of uh, of, of nose masks. I, I thank you, Josephine, and apologies for that um, breaking connection with Josephine or say to two. So registered um, also respiratory specialist uh, at the University of Ghana Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, please stay safe out there. And as always. Make a date with us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Kansi. Have a good night.